Welcome to Tuesday Tips. I'm Ebony Hall, and today I'm joined by Pam Kaslowskis. She's a new trainer here at Navigate, and we're discussing how to effectively prepare for your management and occupancy review, or as we know it, the MOR. So Pam, you're no stranger to MORs. You've been on the other side of this process with our relationship managers in Connecticut, right? That's correct. I worked with a management company as a property manager and then later as director of compliance and director of housing management. So I've seen MORs from both sides now. Very good. So let's talk about having a good MOR. Now, for people who may not be familiar with the process, can you explain the importance of the HUD 9834 form? Unless you're very new to the world of HUD multifamily housing, you're no doubt aware that part of the Management and Occupancy Review, or MOR, is that HUD 9834 form. It's going to walk you through the questions that the reviewer is going to ask. It'll ask from select areas of that form as required by HUD. So it is a required part of the MOR, and it's going to help the reviewer assess performance kind of in a variety of areas. Okay. So what can our viewers do before the review process to make sure that this goes as smoothly as possible? The most important things you can do before your review is make sure that you send the documents that are asked for. So you're going to submit those through the portal, the Navigate portal, so that your reviewer can complete the desk review. That allows your reviewer to review those documents off-site, and it'll result in our needing to spend less time on-site and less time taking you away from your daily tasks that you need to complete. Uh, we know that MORs are stressful for everyone. They used to be stressful for me when I was going through them on the other side. And we know you're hoping to get through them and, and get us out of there as quickly as possible. And we don't want to keep you away from your work any longer than we have to. That desk review can cut down on a lot of that on-site time as well. Absolutely. So there are a few things that uh, property managers tend to overlook when they're preparing for their MOR. Uh, can you tell us about what those are and how we can avoid them? Sure. One of the things that is very frequently overlooked is a staff list. That's one of the items that is requested when we ask for documents to be submitted in the portal. And you want to make sure that you give us the person's name and position, the date of hire, their full salary, and also the percentage of this charge to a particular site. Uh, we know that some property managers have expressed being a little uncomfortable about divulging that information, but it is information that's required by HUD. And if we don't get that, unfortunately, we could have to issue a finding for it. It's only asked because HUD requires it, and we're not going to share that information with anyone other than our staff and HUD if needed. HUD also has some specific requirements with the tenant selection plans and the EIV policies and procedures. Of course, we're talking about HOTMA now. <laughs> what, hey, should, uh, <laughs> what should people know about these documents, especially since that first HOTMA deadline? So the first HOTMA deadline was May 31st, and HUD required that owners and agents update their tenant selection plans and their EIV policies to be compliant with HOTMA requirements by that date. Now, although you have to update your tenant selection plan and your EIV policy by that date, you also have to post it, but you're not going to start enforcing those conditions until later on down the road. So don't panic. Like, at least get started on those documents because they have to be done. Exactly. But um, they're, they're going to be observations, right, on the MOR? That's correct. We are not going to make findings based on HOTMA right now but it will be an observation that it has not been completed. Now, moving on to another critical component, the wait list. Uh, what are the protocols for handling the wait list and what are we gonna be looking for during the MOR? So HUD has now advised that we should not be looking at the wait list offsite. The other thing we should not be looking at offsite is the tenant selection plan. So you wanna make sure you have copies of those on site so that we can take a look at it. One important thing to know with your wait list is that you want to be making sure that it includes notes 
race and ethnicity information, communications, and pass over reasons. For instance, if you passed over someone on the wait list because you needed someone that was at a lower income level, that needs to be in your wait list notes. And if you don't know how to do that, your software provider should be able to tell you how to make that happen. All right, and finally, signage plays a vital role in communicating with people in our communities. So what should viewers know about displaying Navigate contact information or whichever PBCA they have? When you are doing your signage, of course, you're going to be looking at fair housing signage and some other things. You also want to make sure that your residents have information on how to reach Navigate or your contract administrator. We have that poster in a number of different languages. Um, English and Spanish is the main one that we see in this area, at least. So you want to make sure you have it in English and Spanish and any languages that are normally spoken at your property. And if we don't have the language that you need, let us know. We'll happily get that put together for you. And you can scan the QR code that was on your screen. Chris, can you pull that back up for us uh, just for a second so people have time, if they didn't scan it already, um, to take a look at that. And uh, it's navigatehousing.com slash PBCA hyphen contact hyphen poster. And you can get to that from our homepage, click on government contracting, and then do the contact posters. Now, if Navigate is not your PBCA, make sure that you contact your contract administrator, as Pam says, to get the contact information that you need. So, Pam, is there anything else that you'd like to uh, tell us and inform us about before we go? I'm very happy to have joined Navigate. Uh, we hope that this information has been helpful. We share the same goal that the properties do. We want to make sure that you are providing the best housing possible for your residents. Uh, we're your partners. That's why it says Navigate Affordable Housing Partners. We look at management reviews as a way to help you achieve those goals. The better prepared you are for a review, the better you can get more out of it, the better you can show off what you're doing well. Uh, we're going to help you identify training you might need and areas that you might want to focus on where there might be some compliance challenges. Uh, but again, it's also a chance for us to celebrate your successes. A great MOR score is something you can show your owners and you know your supervisors at the management company and say, hey, look, here's how well we're doing things. So we look forward to seeing you at your next MOR. Very good. And Pam, welcome to the team. Uh, thank you for all the great insights. And if people do have questions about their next MOR, how can they get in touch with you? So I am reachable through my email. Unfortunately, it's, it's my first initial last name, so it's a little long. And then you can call the Navigate number, or the main number as well. All right. And that wraps up today's Tuesday tip. You can go to our website again at NavigateHousing.com for all kinds of resources related to MORs, Hotma, everything affordable housing. We'll see you next week. Thank you.